welcome to ETLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at Form 2 Mathematics. Uh, the topic is trigonometric ratios and the subtopic is logarithm of tangent, sine and cosine. So basically we are going to be applying the knowledge that we learned from logarithms. In the topic we talked about logarithm. You can go back to that topic. Uh, we already did it in the videos and check that out. Check how we get the logarithm and antilogs because this is important in being able to do this content that we are working on at the moment. And then we also talked about um, the tangent, the table of tangent, table of sine and table of cosine, both when you are asked for the, to look for the angle and also when you are looking for the angle. So let's look at an example. So when you look at logarithm of tangent, sine and cosine, you can be given such a question, evaluate 234 sine 36 degrees. So you can see we have a normal number we are multiplying with the sine of 36. That tells you the first thing that we need to do is to draw the table that we use in logarithm. So we start with number and then log. So the first number is 234. If we put this into standard form, it becomes 2.34 times 10 power 2. So our value will be 2 point, a certain number that you get from the logarithm table. Remember we discussed this. So if we check that from the logarithm table, we get 2.3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You get, you get 0 0.3692. And then we have sine 36. There are different ways you can do this. First of all, you can go to the sine table, natural signs, and get the sign, which will give you a fraction, a decimal. And then you get the logarithm of that decimal. Alternatively, you can go to the logarithm of sine in the table. We have that in the mathematical table. So if we go to the logarithm of sine, we're just going to check directly on 36 degrees. If we do so, for example, we are going to get 36.0 will give us bar 1.7692. So when you look at this question, the evaluate 234 sine 36, it meant that we are multiplying 234 times sine 36 degrees. So that means we are adding these two. So we have already gotten 2.34 into its log and sine 36 into its log from the logarithm table. Again, I said you can convert sine 36 degrees into its decimals. And then from the decimal, you get now the log, the normal log like we did in form 2. So when we add this, this is going to give us 4, 18, 13, 11, and then we carry 1. So this is 1 plus 2 plus minus 1. So 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus minus 1 tells you we'll get 2. So after that, we go back to the antelope. This means it's 10 power 2 times 10 power 0 0.1384. So we are checking 1384 on the antilog tables as we did in form 2. So when we go to the antilog tables, we want 1384. Point 13. So I went directly to the antilog tables. Remember we said in form 2, you can use the logarithm tables. You just go inside the logarithm tables and look for point 1384 and go outside with it. To get the value of x but also there's an alternative to use the antilog tables the antilog tables are already been done for you like in this case we have 0.13 we start with 0.13 so 0.138 so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so it's going to be 1.374 and then we have the add column which now caters for the 4 so we we'll go to the 4 and the add column. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 is 1. So we are adding 0 0.001, which gives us 
1.375. So if you multiply this by 100, we move this decimal twice, 1, 2, which will give us 137.5. So we have solved this question using logarithm. But remember we said not necessarily. There are different ways you can solve, still using logarithm and you get the same value. Let's do another one more question together. So we have this question. This is a bit contrary to what we have done and it has more. So evaluate 69.6 cos 42 over sine 64. Let's do it step by step. So we start with number and we have log. So we have 69.6. So if we put this in standard form, it will be 6.96 times 10 power 1. So we know the first value is point, 1 point. So when you look at 6.9 in the logarithm table, 6.96, this is point zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. It will be 1.8426. I hope you have seen that. The next one is cos 42 degrees. As I said, you can go to the cos tables, you get the decimal. And then you use that value you've gotten from the cost table to look for the logarithm of that number. Alternatively, you can go to the logarithm of cost. If you got the logarithm of cost, the values have already been gotten for you. So, for example, cost 42, this, this is a snippet of the logarithm of cost. So, when you come to 42.0, you get it by 1. 8711. There is a bar one placed on the top to remind you that it's bar one, those values. So these two numbers are being added together. So let's add because, as you can see from the question, it's multiplication. So this gives us 7, 3, 11, 17, carry 1. So 1 plus 1 minus 1. So it is 2 minus 1, which gives us 1, but without a bar. So we get 1.7137. But we are not done. We also have sine 64. So once again, sine 64, you can get it from the sine tables, natural sine. And then the value you get from the natural sine, you look for the logarithm of that value, but by first changing it into a standard form. Alternatively, you can go to the logarithm of sine, which gives you a direct answer. So if you have the logarithm of sine, you go to 64.0, which gives you bar 1.9537. So the value you got from the first is being subtracted from this. So this is 0, 0. This gives you... Um, Six. So this zero, this gives you two, and then we have zero minus minus one. The zero minus minus one. Remember, we are subtracting. So this is a same zero plus one, which gives us one. So it's one point two six zero zero. So you see how we've done that. You need to be very careful. And then now we look for the antilog. This is the same as 10 power 1 times 10 power 0 0.2600. So you can go to the logarithm table and check for 2600. Inside the logarithm table, you get the value of x. Or you can go to the antilog that will give us 0.26. So if we go to... So you can go to the antilog and check 0 0.2600 and then you multiply by 10, you get the right answer. So there are more questions. You can get more questions on how to use logarithm in these calculations that also involve sine, tangent, and cosine in the app. So take your time, get your mathematical table, sit down, get a question and do it step by step. Ensure that you are able to get correct values from your tables. And then also you get more notes on the steps maybe to take to get the values you need to. So see you in the next lesson.